Good afternoon. It's uh, nice to see you here in Great Castle. It's a very nice castle, as you might have seen. And we, like, we are here to support the trust to try and get it back together, as it was in the 70s. So I'm here as Etienne de Guerre. I'm a French knight. I come from France. Uh, also, I'm back in my period, the knights were half French, half English, still speaking French. But anyway, I'm a French knight and I'm doing here a presentation of weapons and armour, trying to explain to people what battle was like and what weapons would be used against which armour. So here we have some helms. This one is a kettle helm. I'm going to put it on and see, uh, show you how it goes, like this. It would be worn with a strap by uh, sergeant at arms, lower ranks soldiers, and would obviously be easier for them to see. And would have padding like this as well, a bit of uh, ring, male, male shirt, but they wouldn't be protected completely, like with this helmet, which is called the Great Helm. It's called helm, not helmet, because it comes from the French home, because a lot of words from about armor and weapons is from the French. And that would be a knight wearing that, like so. And as you can see, I can move and I can still see you properly, especially when you're further away. I don't know if you heard that, <laughs> a bit muffled. But you can really see properly with that when you fight someone else with a similar helm. Because you will be looking at them, not at what they're doing or as a sword. You will be looking at the sides, you'll be looking at them and use your peripheral vision to try and defend yourself. Because you see their shoulder moving, you see their sword going, coming towards you, so you can defend yourself. Uh, in terms of swords, we have here what they call the Viking sword. I think most people recognize it maybe from the Vikings TV series. Basically a classic Viking sword. That's a slash weapon, slashing weapon. You can stab as well because people at the time don't have so much armor. So especially if you attack clergymen, you'd be easily killed. But you also slash and you can cut or break bones with that. The next example is well are these three, which are my own personal weapons. Starting with this one, which seems to be lighter than the others, although it's a bit heavy still. Uh, it might be carried by an archer. Once his arrows are all gone, he still needs to defend himself, so we'll carry that on the side. But because it's light, he'll be able to run. Maybe go run around people or run away if he has to. Then the next one is my first sword. So it's not very good as an example. Also, I'm showing it to you because the way this blade is made is by removing what you don't need, which is called stock removal, and then put in the fire to be tempered, to be made ready for battle. And it served me well, I can do uh, proper fighting with this, what we call um, full contact fighting. Then, the next sword will be the one I'm using now, which is this one, which is a standard sword for fighting for a knight. Okay. It has no specific name. I know Victorians like to classify everything, so you can have a broadsword, a knight sword, or as, other words like that. But for me, a sword is a sword is a sword. And it depends really how you feel handling it. So I use that to fight now. And it's a standard, properly, proper replica of a, of a weapon of the time. Also with this, you don't necessarily use all the blade. You can use the quillen here. For example, try and get into the helm. Maybe try see if you can get in there. Poke him in the eye. And you also, when you're close to him, close combat, you turn your sword around and you use your pommel. And you can hit him on the helmet or anywhere on his body. And that's where the word pommeling comes from. So, these are, oops. I went off. Came off, sorry about that. Yeah, we'll just stop at this point. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. You should get out of here. Yeah. Well.
it came off the clip. That's all right. Yeah. We'll start again. Not the whole thing, just from no, where yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Where the hell's it gone? There it is. So, put that on there again. There we go. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll edit that bit out. Yeah, it's just when I bend over, it's just yeah, yeah. Push the. There you go. That's okay, it. thank you. Just okay. Away, just away your left off. Right. Away. So was it pommeling, was it? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that bit. So, yeah. okay, yeah. So, as I said, we could fight with his sword, but you could use the rest of the sword, trying to put that through the slit of the helm, or use a pommel. As you in close combat, you can't use your blade, because you can't go far back enough. So you can use, turn it around and use your pommel, and pommel someone, which is where we get the expression pommeling, getting a pommeling. Now, <laughs> we'll try not to do the same mistake. Put that away. And the next sword we have here is the one from Braveheart, which is, this one is a copy from the film, but the one from the film is a proper copy as well. And it's a Scottish Claymore. It's the first one, first type. The second type has what we call a basket hilt that covers the whole hand. So this comes, this big sword, come in the middle of the 13th century and big guys can start swinging that about because they have a better reach, a longer reach. So if they're strong enough, they can use it one-handed from horseback, for example, and swing it about and can people from far further away. And as plate armor comes in from the middle of the 13th century, develops slowly into the 14th century and beyond, you have this kind of armor coming, coming through. This one is a shin bolt. It's a base first one because your legs are the most, uh, could I put it, uh, sensitive to sword slash, if you know, if you will. Um, and then you have knee kneecaps as well. And you have the forearm and elbow and the shoulders, which start towards the end of 13th century. That's about the proper armor. But then when plate comes in more and more, you have less spaces where you can slash at people and try to break their bones, like you do with this sword. This, for example, you will go, not on the hand, but on the body, you'll go like this. With these ones, it's because the plate doesn't enable you to slash across and break bones, so you try to stab people. So, those people who use them with one hand it, now decide to use them with two hands because they can control them better and stab people better. And they will go for the articulation where you can put plate under the arms, in the crotch area, maybe at the back of the knee, on the inside of the, the elbow as well, if they can reach there. And as you see there, there's a piece of leather, which means you can actually grab the sword here. And you can also, with your glove, if you're careful, you can grab the sword where it's sharp but he won't cut you, if you as long as you don't move your hand up and down. But again, it will give you more precision. And as plate armor really comes into its own, where the body is mostly covered with plate armor, there is no point anymore slashing across and trying to cut people down. You have to try and stab them from a longer distance. So you can have all this blunt up to it, and it's like a long knife at the end, which will be sharp and pointy. So you hopefully you'll be able to reach uh, yeah. under the, uh, the plate armor in the soft areas and go through the male links and then twist the blade and the, the links will break off and then you can push the sword further in and then reach the body and stab people and the sword especially the single-handed sword of earlier times it's not actually the best weapon for fighting. It's a more of a sim status symbol. It's, it says you're a knight because metal is expensive. So only rich people can afford them, which means knights. And if you have a sword as a peasant or as a civilian, it's also wasted on you. So you're not allowed to, uh, you're not allowed basically to carry one, but it's not the most efficient one. What you need is Actually, apparently, the falchion is a better weapon 
which is a blade that starts narrow and goes wider at the end with an angle and a tip. And that'll be much easier to get into the links, to twist and break the links. So that is it, that is it really, that's what I'm showing here. And at the end of the, the day, when gunpowder comes in, all this becomes obsolete. The swords are not useful anymore, the plate armor is not useful anymore. So that's the end of the Middle Ages, really. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm uh, Etienne de Guerre from Harlech Knights. Thank you.